Hi guys, how you all doing? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me. This is episode 111 of Hockey on the Spot. Um, the long overdue trade deadline edition. I was unable to do it at the intended time of doing it, which I intended to do it the day after the trade deadline, but sadly I had some things going on, so I really didn't get a chance to. <coughs> I'm barely even able to do this one today because I'm losing my voice, but I'm going to fight through it to do this video. Um, try to get through this really quick since the trade deadline long already happened. Um, pretty much a lot of trades happened since the Olympics. Um, we had minor ones going on like that I really won't go into detail with, uh, like Brian Connolly to the Chicago Blackhawks for Brad Winchester. Brad Winchester going to the Minnesota Wild. He has not played an NHL game all year long. Maybe he will for the Wild. Who knows? Maybe he has. I haven't been paying attention. Um, Mark Mancari from the Blues going to the Panthers for a prospect. Eric Salak. Mancari has some NHL experience. Got some trades there, um, Patrick Mullen from Vancouver to Ottawa for Jeff Costello, so, you know, minor trades like that, a lot of minor trades happened, won't really go into detail with the minor trades, um, <coughs> so, with that being said, um, and then the other minor trade, uh, Andre Peterson going from the Ottawa Senators to the Anaheim Ducks for defenseman Alex Grant, and that's probably the most significant minor trade because Alex Grant in the two NHL games he's played he scored a goal so um, we'll see what happens there in the meanwhile um, let's just now go over some of the bigger trades that happened since the Olympics um, starting with arguably the biggest trade of all from after the Olympics um, from February 28th a big the big deal between the St. Louis Blues and the Buffalo Sabres um, the Buffalo Sabres trading, goal t finally getting goaltender Ryan Miller out of Buffalo, as well as captain Steve Ott, both of them going to the St. Louis Blues. Um, Ryan Miller, um, in exchange for uh, goaltender Yaroslav Halak, forward Chris Stewart, prospect forward William Carrier, who was a second-round pick from last year's draft, a 2015 first round pick and a conditional third round pick in 2016 um, I think I, I don't know what that third round pick becomes um, under what terms I'm not good with that kind of stuff I think it's if the Blues go to the Stanley Cup final or the Western Conference final or something like that then it becomes a higher pick um, anyway but um, definitely, Ryan Miller was definitely expected to go to the Blues. Um, I don't think they expected Ott to go there. But um, it's definitely worked in the Blues' favor so far. The Blues undefeated since Ryan Miller has joined. Um, and, and since the Olympics, they've only lost one game, and that was a one nothing loss in Anaheim to the Ducks. But Ryan Miller had not arrived with the team yet, nor did Steve Ott. So... <laughs> um, they lost that game one nothing. Um, the Blues have just been unstoppable, and now, as of last night, they've taken the at least for now. They now lead the Anaheim Ducks by one point to take the lead over not just the Western Conference but the National Hockey League. They are hot right now. <clears throat> of course, it was Brian Elliott who got the start last night, not Ryan Miller. Um. As far as what the Buffalo Sabres get, again, a good prospect, William Carrier. He's a guy who's going to have some good potential in the future. Um, 2015, obviously expected to be a very deep draft. Don't know too much about 2016, and again, don't know what that conditional pick becomes, under what terms. And Chris Stewart, he's been playing for the Buffalo Sabres. It was expected that he was going to get traded soon after, but that did not turn out to be the case. Chris Stewart turned out to be a keeper, and though he hasn't gotten on the board yet, um, Buffalo has actually been playing better hockey as of late. Um, Stewart, I guess, has played okay. Um, actually about to look at the statistics so far. Um, 
of what's been going on. But it's Chris Stewart, um, very good player, of course, the younger brother to Anthony Stewart. Um, <laughs> he has played two games for the Buffalo Sabres since the dead line, and he's got nothing going, pretty much. So um, he really hasn't been playing all too much. Um, definitely does not seem to be the same player he used to be. So, um, but anyway, you know, hopefully, if but if it, when when Chris Stewart is playing at his best, and if the Sabers do give him a chance, this is a guy who's definitely gonna give him a good scoring edge for sure. And then, of course, we mentioned I mentioned Halak going to, to the Buffalo Sabers as well. He sat as the backup in a Sabers uniform for one game before getting traded again. And I'll explain that trade later on in the, in the blog. So, um, not too much to talk about with Halak. So yeah, Ryan Miller though he's definitely been a force to be reckoned with in the net when he's played. Um, as far as Steve Ott is concerned, um, he has he's played five games, one assist, a minus one. Seven penalty minutes and seven shots on goal. Those are his St. Louis Blues statistics so far. Um, he hasn't exactly been scoring, um, but he's there to be more of a physical presence anyway. So, um, and bring leadership. So and add some depth. So he's been okay for the Blues. I think I haven't really been watching too much of the Blues. Um, <laughs> next, this is another. I guess you can say this is one of the one of the bigger minor trades that happened. I will go over bigger minor trades. Um, the Chicago Blackhawks trading top prospect Brandon Peary to the Florida Panthers in exchange for two draft picks, a f third rounder in 2014 and a fifth rounder in 2016. Um, Brandon Peary, obviously, at one point. The Hawks had high hopes for to be their second line center. He was the top scorer in the American Hockey League for the Rockford Ice Hawks last year. Um, so kind of a surprise to see Peary gone. He's played three games so far for the Panthers. Does is a plus one with seven shots on goal. So he's gotten looks, but he hasn't gotten on the board yet in a Panthers uniform. But he's going to be a good player. He is going to be a good player. He'll be a very good second line center in the league for sure. Um, I think it's a good move by the Panthers to get him. <laughs> um, Montreal Canadiens would acquire defenseman Mike Weaver from the Florida Panthers in exchange for a 2015 fifth-round pick. Weaver is a guy getting on in his years. He is 35 years of age, the undrafted shutdown defenseman. He's played two games for the Canadiens. Um, doesn't have a point, but again, he's not a scorer. He is a shutdown defenseman, and he'll add some defensive depth for the Habs. However, the only problem is he is five foot ten, very small defenseman, and we know Montreal Canadiens, one of the smallest teams in the league. So this doesn't help them as far as the size factor goes. But um, we'll see how good he does. We'll see how good he does. Um, Ilya Brzgalov going to the Minnesota Wild from the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for a 2014 fourth round pick. Brzgalov, unfortunately, his stay in Edmonton was a rather disappointing one. Um, he did not play well for the Oilers. Um, he did not play well for the Oilers. He played 20 games and went 5-8-5, five, 5-8-6, eight, five, five, eight, and six, combining overtime and shootout. Um, and including three straight overtime slash shootout losses, um, and he's really, really di has not did has not really did not play well at all in Edmonton. Um, he made his debut for the Minnesota Wild last night, and that was his third straight overtime slash shootout loss to the St. Louis Blues. But um, the Wild, of course, without Nicholas Backstrom, he's done for the year and. Josh Harding still battling MS, so he could be he could also be done for the year. So now, um, they're go now Wild forced to go get a goaltender. Brzgalov they get, and they still got Darcy Kemper as well, who's played well when he started. So um, Kemper 
you know, we'll see how he does. He's not, through 19 games, he's 11, 4, and 4. Very good. <coughs> he's played very, very well. 2.29 goals against average and a 9.22 save percentage. He's played very well for the Wild. So, um, he may, he could still be the starter even with Brzezgalov around if Brzezgalov doesn't pick his game up. So we'll see what happens there. <coughs> um, and then we got a bunch of moves by the Anaheim Ducks here. Here they sent forward Dustin Penner to the Washington Capitals in exchange for a 2014 fourth round pick. And then they sent that very that very same fourth round pick, and turn they then turned that draft pick into a conditional pick and sent that same pick to the Dallas Stars for veteran blue liner Stefan Robida. Um, and then they also trade goaltender Victor Foss to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for a 2014 fifth round pick and a 2015 third round pick. So, explaining the trades, Dustin Penner, again, he played very well in his, with his time in Anaheim. Kind of sad to see him go, but at the same time, you know, he wasn't playing very consistently. One night he was the best player on the ice, and, not, and other nights he was just lost out there. So it was just pretty much a move, really, more or less, to get their youngsters to come up and play a little more. Um, <coughs> although, in all due reality, um, what the Ducks' real intention was was to go out and grab Thomas Vanek, but unfortunately that did not work. Um, and I will explain why later in the blog. Um, and but and then of course Stefan Robida, he has not yet played in the lineup. He's still battling that injury. He's expected to return around March 14th, so it could, will be very soon that he returns to, to the lineup and plays for the Ducks. He's 37 years of age. He's a very good two-way defenseman. Um, and they'll add some defensive depth for the Ducks. They now have nine defensemen. That includes the the lot. That includes Sheldon Surrey, who is lost for the season, of course. Um, and then Victor Foss going to Edmonton again. The Ducks had too much in the way of goaltending depth, and they knew they were getting rid of one of their goaltenders, and they knew it would be either Hiller or Foss. But with Hiller playing as well as he has, it couldn't. They couldn't get rid of him. Victor Faust was the guy to send home, send away. And with Brzgalov gone, Oilers needed a backup goaltender now. With Ben Scrivens, the official starter, they signed Scrivens to a two-year extension. Scrivens has played extremely well. Um, <coughs> no, since going to the Oilers, he really has. And he's been a, and if they just get a better team in front of him, he's going to be stellar. So... We'll we'll see what happens, but again for the Capitals now when they with getting Dustin Penner, let's talk about the Capitals. Um, gives them a little bit more forward depth and a guy who could play, you know, as a t as a top six forward. Um, he has yet to score for the Capitals, but he's gotten good looks. He's gotten good looks out there. Um, he he's gotten good looks out there. Um, he's a minus one so far, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he, he's yet to really get comfortable. So we'll see how it goes. Let's just pray that his Washington Capitals career isn't what his Los Angeles Kings career was. But we'll see what happens there. Um, but, again, going back to Stefan Robida, the Ducks, Really happy to have him on board. It gives him another right-handed defenseman, a veteran presence on the blue line. And when he gets in the lineup, he'll really solidify their blue line for sure. So looking forward to seeing Stefan Robida playing in Anaheim uh, when he gets back from injury. Again, all those moves, though, were mainly intended to get Thomas Vanek. And they actually gave the New York Islanders a very substantial offer, but once again... It did not work out, and if that, and if Thomas Vanek didn't work out, they were also in on Ryan Kessler. Ryan Kessler was a big trade trade target from the Vancouver Canucks. He did not get traded, and Mike Camilleri was kind of the third option for them, but the Flames held on to him. 
this team's unwillingness to trade players just got the best of Anaheim in the end. Anyway, moving on, New York Islanders would finally get defenseman Andrew McDonald out of there. Um, he would not sign with the Islanders. He rejected an offer, and they had to get him out of there. Um, the Islanders trading him to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for prospect center Matt Mangine, uh, a 2014 third-round pick and a 2015 second-round pick. Um, you get the feeling that the Islanders definitely could have gotten more than what they asked for. Andrew McDonald, he'll definitely solidify the blue line for the Flyers. He's a very good shutdown defenseman, and he's one of the top shot blockers in the league. He already actually has an assist on the year, so um, he's showing what little offense he can provide already in Philly. Um, Matt Mangin, undrafted center from Southampton, New York, 24 years of age. Not really a top prospect, actually. Looking at these statistics, he's not really had. He is an East. He was an East Coast Hockey League player last season, and he didn't thrive there. So, not really a trade. I'm if I were Garth Snow in the New York Islanders, I'd be shooting myself in the foot right now for not getting more or asking for more, <laughs> even. <laughs> um, Phoenix Coyotes deal two, two of their prospect defensemen to the Chicago Blackhawks, David Rundblad and Matthew Brisebois, for a 2014 second-round pick. The main player to talk about in this trade, don't know too much about Matthew Brisebois. The main player that I really want to talk about um, is is David Rundblad. Uh, David Rundblad, um, David Rundblad, he, former first-round pick, by the St. Louis Blues, 17th overall in 2009. He's a guy who, who I expect to be a very who many expect could, to be a good player in the future. He's already had one game of experience. He played last night for the Blackhawks. Um, and he'll be a good two-way defenseman. Probably more, more, probably more of a shutdown type defenseman. But we'll see. He's expected to be good, but anything could happen. And now. I actually look at Matthew Brisebois' statistics from the Rue Noranda Huskies of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. His And just his Quebec Major Junior Hockey League statistics in general. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, last year, career year for him with the Huskies, 64 games, 19 goals, 54 assists, 73 points, um, and a plus 15, but... 103 penalty minutes. So he's a physical defenseman with an offensive upside and a big shot more likely than not. So we'll see what Brisebois has to bring if he ever does make it to the NHL. That's another one of the, the bigger minor trades. <laughs> um, <laughs> quite arguably, another trade that is qu has quite arguably been considered the biggest trade since the Olympics, since the end of the Olympics, <laughs> Between the Florida Panthers and the Vancouver Canucks, Roberto Luongo returning to the Florida Panthers from the Vancouver Canucks along with prospect forward Stephen Anthony um, in exchange for goaltender Jacob Markstrom and forward Sean Mathias. Um, the timing of this trade, I definitely something that I don't agree with. Um as far as the Vancouver Canucks are concerned, um, they should Roberto Luongo should have been out the door last year, and they should never have traded Corey Schneider. Corey Schneider is now a member of the New Jersey Devils, and Roberto Luongo, of course, returns to the Florida Panthers. They now have Eddie Lack and Jacob Markstrom as their goaltenders. Uh, Markstrom, he has yet to really play a game. Actually, I take that back. He's played one game for Vancouver, and that was a relief appearance against Dallas. Um, Eddie Lack is the guy expected to be the starter, and Markstrom is expected to be his backup. But Markstrom's NHL career has been a rather disappointing one, at least so far. Um, and he's 24 years of age, six foot six, 196 pounds. So he's going to have to break out at some point. It probably wouldn't be with Vancouver because Eddie Lack is expected to be the starter. But Vancouver, they have just really fallen out of things. Um, they've really fallen out of things. 
uh, their goaltending has just been mediocre, and and you know their their offense has not been good. Their defense has not been good. John Tortorella's system really not working anymore in Vancouver. It was going well in the beginning. It's not doing its job anymore. And then Sean Mathias, again, he's been in the league for a few years now. He's 26 years old, still young, big forward, six foot four, 223 pounds, a two-way forward. He, uh, he's played two games so far, has an assist, um, but a minus one rating, nine shots on goal. So, um, no, And actually that seven of those shots coming in one game. Mathias... He's made his presence known in Vancouver. He's actually played really well under Tortorella's system in the two games he's played so far. And it doesn't surprise me. He kind of is a John Tortorella-type player. So we'll see. He may continue to thrive under there, and we'll see how that goes. Um, now, the, going the other way, Stephen Anthony Prospect who's playing in the East Coast Hockey League. Don't know too much about him, but Roberto Luongo, he is the signature piece in all this. Um, again, Timing of the trade, not good if you're the Vancouver Canucks. So far, Roberto Luongo, 1-1 one one with Florida. He knows, he already knows that they're not going to be making the playoffs this year. And you could expect that Luongo now with a Florida team that doesn't, is not having a good year, will probably finish his season with an under 500 record. Um, but he's 34 years of age. He's not getting any younger. Still big at six foot three, two hundred seventeen pounds. He could still play the game, but he's not the Roberto Luongo we used to know when he was one of the most consistent goaltenders in the NHL. So, at least in the regular season. So we'll see what happens, you know. But I feel like he's had a good year so far, and for Vancouver to trade him now, at the time they need him most, not good, not good at all. Florida definitely wins this trade hands down. <laughs> Next, we have a, we had another trade. Um, the Phoenix Coyotes and the Washington Capitals. The Coyotes acquiring forward Martin Erat and prospect forward uh, John Mitchell. I believe, yeah, yeah, it's John Mitchell, prospect forward who used to be on the Anaheim Ducks. The Ducks traded him to get Matthew Perot. Uh, Martin Erat finally out of Washington. Um, and in exchange, the Capitals would go on to acquire from, uh, Coyotes' top prospect forward, Chris Brown, who already played a game for the Capitals. Um, defenseman Rostislav Klus, uh, and a fourth-round pick at two in the 2015 NHL draft. Um, Rostislav Klesler, though, he would not remain a capital for very long. He would then end up getting traded again. We'll talk about that later on in the blog. Um, the, the main pieces here are Chris Brown and Martin Erat. Martin Erat, we'll talk about him first. He's been wanting out of Washington pretty much since he got there. He did not fit Adam Oates' system, and he did not fit the offense, the high-tempo game of the Capitals, which is a surprise because he is a sniper. Um, so um, Erat was playing on the fourth line for the Capitals. He just couldn't buy a goal, it seemed. But he went to – he's now a member of the Coyotes. Hopefully he can have play better there. Um, and going the other way, Chris Brown, again, during the offseason, he was the top prospect – for the Phoenix Coyotes in their top 10 prospect list. So it's kind of a surprise to see him go. Um, he's expected to be a very good hockey player for years to come. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Next up, another trade that also goes down. It's arguably the biggest trade in the deadline. Maybe the biggest trade of March 5th. For sure, the New York Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning also maybe the most surprising trade. Uh, New York Rangers acquire 38-year-old veteran forward Martin San Luis from the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for forward Ryan Callahan, a 2015 first-round pick and a conditional second-round pick in 2014. That second-round pick will become a first-round pick if. The New York Rangers go to the Western, to, excuse me, the Eastern Conference Finals. 
I believe that is the case. Or it might be if they make the playoffs. I don't know. But also, if the Lightning, one thing that's not mentioned here, if the Lightning do re-sign Callahan, then the Rangers get a second-round pick. So that's also part of the deal. Um, but let's now break down the trade. I think the as far as players go, the Rangers definitely won this trade. Marty San Luis has another year left on his contract, and so he's not just a rental. He's a short-term, long-term. He's a short-term, long-term acquisition. Um, and though he's 38 years of age, he can still really play the game, and he's played well since coming over to the Rangers. Even though he hasn't necessarily gotten on the board too much as of yet, he has one assist so far for the Rangers. He's done other things that's made him look really, really good. Um, three games, one assist, minus one, nine shots on goal. That minus one, they're going to have to fix that, but he's done the other things, as I mentioned, that's made him look really, really good. Um... He's done the other things that's made him look good. One goal away from 30 on the year and 370 for his career. Um, we're really hoping he can really break out for the Rangers because he is. if anyone could break out for the Rangers, it's him. Um, the Rangers needed scoring, and San Luis can definitely provide that. Going the other way, Ryan Callahan. Kind of a surprise that he got traded considering <clears throat> it looked like the, Ra the Rangers and him were very, very close on a deal. But he was just asking for way too much of his caliber. He, this, we're talking about a player who's really a third-line player, maybe second line at best. Um, Callahan managed to capture his first assist as a member of the Lightning the other night against Boston. Um, he's already a plus one, six shots on goal. So he's also playing well over in Tampa. And Ranger fans obviously will wish him all the best. But it was a captain for captain trade. Lightning, of course, now have named Steven Stamkos their new captain. Rangers will not name a new captain until the next season. Um, many, one could possibly expect that Dan Girardi may be the next captain. He was given the third A. Or maybe look to a guy like Ryan McDonough. Or maybe it will be St. Louis. Who knows? Um, but... Regardless, Rangers will have to have a captain soon. So, I think Rangers definitely won this trade. The only thing that's really a concern for the Rangers now is that those draft picks that they traded. Those draft picks, of course, could go on to become very good players. And if that is the case, then the Lightning win the trade long term. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Next, we probably got the biggest minor trade of the deadline for sure. Uh, Braden McNabb from the Buff Buffalo Sabres trade defenseman Braden McNabb, for prospect forward Jonathan Parker, a 2014 second round pick and a 2015 second round pick to the Los Angeles Kings in exchange for prospect defenseman Nicholas Delorier and prospect forward Hudson Fashing. For those of you who don't remember Hudson Fashing, he played paid for Team USA at the 2014 World Junior Championships and was one of the top players on that team. Um, native of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, he was one of the top players on that team. He's got really good legs. And Nicholas Delorier, he's playing games for the Sabres. Um, a defenseman guy expected, I guess, to be a, a two-way defenseman. Um, but so... We'll see what happens there. The real big piece of this deal, though, is Braden McNabb. Don't know too much about Jonathan Parker. Um, a native of Solana Beach, California. A former star, former, former star in the Western Hockey League for the Prince Albert Raiders when he scored 45 goals and 86 points in 71 games, 41 assists as well. But Braden McNabb is really the main piece of this. He has been a top prospect defenseman for the Sabres for many years, but he just never really was able to solidify his place in the lineup. He now goes somewhere where he has the potential to do so. So, it one day. But he's 23 years of age, so, you know, you, got, you have to figure not much time left for McNabb to do so. Again, one of the top highly touted prospects at one time. Um former member of the Kootenai Ice of the Western Hockey League. He was always considered to be one of the best defensemen on their team. 
Um, this is a two-way defenseman, and the Kings have a good future in their hands with him. Um, Edmonton Oilers trade Alex Hemsky to the Ottawa Senators uh, for a 2014 fifth-round pick and a 2015 third-round pick. Hemsky has worked out very well for the Senators so far, and he's added provided some some playmaking that they've been missing for a while. He has a last game against the Winnipeg Jets. He had three assists. He's playing on a line with Jason Spezza right now. So it's really working out. Um, it's really helping Spezza get his season turned around. Hemsky has complemented the Senators' system very, very well. Um, obviously now there's obviously still the concern if they're going to make the playoffs or not. But... We'll see what happens. Hemsky, though, he's been good for the Sens since coming along. Um, and it's a great acquisition for them. <laughs> uh, New Jersey Devils acquire forward Tormo Rutu from the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for forward Andre Loktyanov and a conditional third-round pick in 2017. I forget the terms of that pick, but um, it worked. Uh, this is a trade, I think, that works out well. Really, more for the for the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes needed a speedy, a fast, a faster player who could kill penalties um, and also help work the power play. Loktyanov can do that when he's playing at a high level. You know, when playing his game well, um, he is, has not really had a good season, unfortunately. But he does add a little bit of depth for Carolina. It gives them another center. Um, as well, so we'll see how Loktiano does. Tormo Rutu, this is really the one in question. It, he's looked like he's looked good so far, being with the Devils in two games. He has two points, a goal, and an assist, both coming against his former team, the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, two nights ago. That his goal against his former team would be the game winner, er, as well. But uh, th we're talking about a player here who has constantly battled injuries throughout his career. He has been battling injury after injury after injury since um, pretty much since the 09-10 season. He then was completely healthy for 2010-2011, but then after that he's had some injuries ever since. He missed almost all but 17 games of the lockout shortened year. Um, Injuries have just not been friendly to him. It, it's and again, not only that, but he's not a really fast player, and he really hasn't had that great of a season. He's a plus one already with the Devils, but prior to that, he was a minus nineteen for the Devils. <laughs> so, excuse me for the Hurricanes, <laughs> and for the Hurricanes, fifty-seven games, five goals, just five goals, eleven assists, and sixteen points and only 79 shots on goal. So he hasn't played well this year. Um, hopefully the change of scenery can turn his game around, and hopefully maybe he'll surprise the Devils and their fans. He'll surprise us all. But I don't know. It's hard to say. Again, this is a player who has too, too much of a history with injuries to, to keep yourself safe with him in your lineup. Um... And he's not that fast either. He's not a great skater. And the Devils, that's really what they needed in this trade deadline. They needed skating. They needed a guy who with who could skate fast. And they're not a fast team to begin with. So, I don't know. I'm kind of iffy about the acquisition here for the Devils. So far, it seems like Rutu has played better in New Jersey than Loktyanov has in Carolina. But you never know. We'll see what happens. Um, next, we get to the reason why the Anaheim Ducks could not acquire Thomas Vanek because he went to the Montreal Canadiens. The Montreal Canadiens acquiring Thomas Vanek and a conditional fifth-round pick in 2014 from the Islanders in exchange for prospect forward Sebastian Kohlberg and a 2014 conditional second-round pick. I do not know the terms of these conditional picks, but the Islanders... They were given a very substantial offer by the Ducks. Very surprising that they didn't take that. What, rather than getting top players like Emerson Edom and possibly Kyle Palmieri and a first-round pick and maybe a defenseman to go along with it if the Ducks were nice enough, they'd go for one prospect who who made himself well-known for Team Sweden and the World Juniors a couple years ago. Um... 
Yeah, made himself well known in the 2013 World Junior Championship. Six points in six games, four goals. But you don't know how he's going to play. He's never played an NHL game. Um, and again, that second round pick should have been a first round pick. And it shouldn't have been conditional. I, Montreal, they're getting a player who, even though he hasn't scored yet, a player with a huge offensive upside, a guy who drives to the net, and Montreal's needed that all season long. They need a guy. They need a guy who could drive to the net. He's a right-handed shot. Um, <laughs> he's a right-handed shot who plays on the left wing side. <clears throat> and Vanek again. He rejected a seven-year offer from the Islanders. Vanek's had a good season though so far, combined with the Sabers and the Islanders. Twenty-one goals, fifty-three points combined. Um. But now he just needs to score for Montreal. Again, this is a place that has a lot of pressure, a much bigger market, so it could get under Vanek's skin a little and could force him to not play so well. We'll see, though. You never know. Montreal in the playoff position. Vanek hasn't been in the playoffs since 2011. So we'll see. It's going to be really interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see how Vanek does over in, uh, in uh, Montreal. Um, next, of course, mentioning that Yaroslav Halak did not remain in Buffalo and Rostislav Klesla did not remain in Washington. Halak was instant, almost instantly traded to the Washington Capitals as well as a third round pick in 2015 for Michael Neuvert and Rostislav Klesla. Klesla, when he was acquired by the Sabres, was instantly sent to the American Hockey League and then not too long after that, he ref after refusing to go, he announced his retirement from the National Hockey League at 31 years of age to end what was not a very great National Hockey League career. Injuries really hurt his career. A shutdown defenseman who really did not live up to his fourth overall draft status from 2000. Um, Klesla would have helped, probably helped the Sabres, maybe, giving them a veteran presence on that blue line, but... I'd, but they sent him down. He wasn't really having a good season anyway. So he announces his retirement. It's a shame. But Michael Neuvert going the other way. He is expected to be the backup goaltender for many years to come for Jonas Enroth, who they now believe in to be their starter for many years to come. And going the other way, yo, Halak. This is not a goaltender who the Blues believe could lead them to the promised land. Um, the Blues really built to win a cup now. Um, and Halak really was holding them back. He's played one game so far for the Capitals, and he won that one game against Phoenix, allowing two goals on 33 shots. So he's looking good so far, folks, Washington fans. And, you know, this if he continues to play like that, he could really help them get back into the playoff picture. Would be such a surprise if the Caps did not make the playoffs. Oh, yeah, and be sure to check out, folks. Check it out, folks. Washington Capitals and Pittsburgh Penguins set to face off tonight, um, 7 p.m. Eastern Time in Washington, so be sure to check that game out. Um, Crosby versus Ovechkin, always exciting to watch. <laughs> Minor trade, good trade made by the Pittsburgh Penguins, acquiring forward Marcel Gotch from the Florida Panthers in exchange for a fifth-round pick in 2014 and a third-round pick in 2015. Many th people thought that Gotch was one of the few players not on the trade list by the Florida Panthers. Well, turns out to not be the case. The German forward, um, you know, he may not be live up to his draft status. He's not the offensive player that people thought he would be when he was drafted, but he's one of the top face-off winning centers in the league, one of the top depth players in the league, and really, he's got talent, you know. He's got talent, kills penalties, and so good good acquisition by the Penguins. Very good acquisition by the Penguins. He'll add some depth for them. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets acquired defenseman Nick Schultz from the Edmonton Oilers in exchange from the, for a fifth-round pick in 2014. Nick Schultz, a shutdown defenseman. Um, he'll add some defensive depth. For the he'll add some defensive depth for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's 31 years of age. Um, he's played two games so far, so he'll get add some penalty killing for the team. 
team. Columbus Blue Jackets also trading away forward Marion Gabrick to the Los Angeles Kings in exchange for forward Matt Fratton, a 2014 or 2015 second round pick, and a conditional third round pick as well. Don't know what year that's for. Don't know the terms of that deal. And the Kings can shoot for that second round pick. The Kings can choose what year I think they want it to be. E4 as well. Uh, Matt Fratton. No, this is a guy. Matt Fratton, he played well. He he did not play as well as the Kings would have liked him to have played. This is a guy who is was expected to be a top six forward. Now he's in Columbus, so... He's really going to have to play well in Columbus. He's only played one game so far, so we'll see how that works out. And then Marion Gabrick, he's been on the trade block for a long time. He's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. Uh, Gabrick has not had a good season by any means, and so far through two games, he has not played well for the L.A. Kings. Um, anything could happen between now and the, the end of the season, but... Gabrick doesn't seem to be the same player he used to be. He doesn't seem to have the same motivation he used to have either. He had a gr Gabrick did have a great start to the year. Actually, he had a great, great start to the year. He he was the top scorer for the Blue Jackets for a while. He had a f streak where he scored 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points in 7 of 9 games. Uh, before going on a huge scoring slump and then ultimately suffering an injury on November 14th against Boston, ultimately to come back on December 21st and suffer another injury against the Philadelphia Flyers, though he had an assist in that game. Um, he scored a goal in his first game back against the New Jersey Devils, but he just has not had a good season. It's just straight up, plain and simple, Gabrick. Not the player he used to be, um, at least as far as right now is concerned. Uh, we'll see what happens within the next few seasons with him. <clears throat> but if he is on his game, which the Kings are definitely hoping for, it'll add some offense to their team for sure. Kings right now riding a seven-game win streak. Um, they hope to keep that going. Um, minor trade, sort of. Here, um, Colorado Avalanche acquiring goaltender Rito Barra from the Calgary Flames in exchange for a second-round pick in 2014. Um, this is more to add goaltending depth. The Avalanche still have John Sebastian Jaguar, so Barra more of a third goaltender and a guy who could be be their backup within the coming years when Jaguar does call it quits. Um, so he'll add, so he adds goaltending depth for the Avalanche. Um, Matt Molson, Buffalo Sabres trade forwards Matt Molson and Cody McCormick to the Minnesota Wild in exchange for forward Tory Mitchell, a second round pick in 2014 and a second round pick in 2016. So Buffalo loading up on draft picks and Tory Mitchell, you know, a fourth line player, um, a fourth line player. The trade was more for the picks, um. But he adds fourth line depth and and veteran experience, I guess, to the Sabers. Um, for the Wild, though, Cody McCormick, a fourth line player, as well, and a good one too. So a guy who does play hard and he hits, got decent enough talent. But so Wild definitely happy to have him on board. And then Matt Molson, the primary acquisition in this trade. Um, this is the third, second time he's been traded this year. He started the year with the New York Islanders, was traded to the Buffalo Sabres for Thomas Vanek. Um, and so far throughout the year, 38 points, points, and that includes 17 goals and 21 assists. Um, oh, although, of course, now Molson scored in his last game against the St. Louis Blues, so now make that um, 18 goals and 22 assists and 40 points. So um, Molson having a good, so far in Minnesota playing well, and they really hope that he can bring them the scoring touch, that bring them scoring, because the Wild, you know, they want to make the playoffs. They're built to make the playoffs. They just need to be better on the road, and their goaltending needs to be solid.
Um, goaltender trade, Tim Thomas going to the Dallas Stars in exchange for Dan Ellis. Um, so basically a swap of backup goaltenders between the Florida Panthers and the Dallas Stars. Although Thomas, of course, at his age can still be a starter. Um, he can still be a starter. Um, Timmy Thomas is 39 years of age. Um, he's played one game for the Stars. He was more of a it was a relief appearance, and he got the win, making six saves. So, a guy who could give drop get, take some pressure off of Kari Lettinen for sure. And for Dan Ellis, he'll serve as a nice backup to Roberto Luongo. So, he will he, he, we'll see how that goes and how long it takes for Dan Ellis to get into a game. Um, minor trade, of course, between the. L.A. Kings and the San Jose Sharks. Sharks acquiring a conditional 2016 seventh round pick in exchange for prospect, prospect forward James Livingston. Not really much to talk about there. Another one of the bigger minor league trades between the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning acquiring Jonathan Audi Marchessault and Dalton Smith, two forwards from the Blue Jackets in exchange for forward Dana Tyrell and defenseman Matt Tiermina. Tayer Mina, he's had NHL experience and had good looks when he played. So we'll see how this trade works out. We'll see how this trade works out. Really not much to talk about with it, though. Flyers trade defenseman Andre Mazaros to the Boston Bruins in exchange for a third-round pick in 2014. Mazar with the acquisition of Andrew McDonald, Mazaros was on his way out. Um, the Boston Bruins also claimed defenseman Corey Potter off waivers from the Ed Edmonton Oilers. They now add on some defense to replace the Dennis Seidenberg, who is out for the season. Mazaros pl has played well so far in Boston. So we'll, we'll see. Through one game, he has his first goal. A goal that was under review, but he's got it. He had six shots on goal in that game, too. So Mazaros, he's playing well. He's you know, I think he'll be a good acquisition for the Bruins. I really do believe he will. Um, I also think Corey Potter will be a solid shutdown defenseman for the Bruins as well. There was also another waiver claim to talk about as well. Um, the Buffalo Sabres claiming forward Corey Conacher off waivers from the Ottawa Senators. Corey Conacher has not been as good since leaving the Lightning, and it's a shame, really. Because he was expected to be a good player, I don't believe he's yet. I believe I don't believe he's played in a game yet for the Sabers. But I mean, he's expected to be a good player. Maybe it's just a sophomore jinx. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it all works out in the end. Not only three trades left. Only three major trades to go. Um, the Vancouver Canucks sending defenseman Rafael Diaz to the New York Rangers for a fifth fifth round pick in 2015. Diaz has yet to get into a game for the Rangers, and who knows when he will, considering how well the Rangers um, have been playing. Diaz, this is the second time he's been traded this year. He was traded from the Montreal Canadiens for Dale Weiss. Um, you know, and this is a guy, he is a good, expected to be a very, he's a very good shutdown defenseman when given the chance to play. The, the undrafted 28-year-old from Bar Switzerland um, was on the Swiss Olympic team. Had a very good Olympic as a shutdown defenseman, and when he does get the chance to play, he'll be good for the Rangers. He'll fit a shutdown. He'll he'll be able to sh he'll be able to shut down the other teams as a guy who gets down block shots. So I think he'll be good for the Rangers if given the chance to play. Um. The Calgary Flames trade forward Lee Stempniak to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for a third-round pick in 2014. It was rumored that Stempniak had been traded right after the Olympics because he was taken off the roster on the websites, which which signaled that either he had been traded or was going to get traded. Well, it turns out now he is traded. The Penguins get another depth player um, who can play along, who could take Pascal Dupuis' role in playing a lot with alongside Sidney Crosby, a two-way forward who kills penalties and is very good at doing so, native of West Seneca, New York. Um, an 0-3 draft pick from the Blues. So Stemniak, you know, he'll add on nicely playing alongside Sidney Crosby and Chris Kunitz. He's got some talent. He really does. 
And then the final trade to talk about, the final trade and a big one too. We go out with a major trade here. The Detroit Red Wings acquire centerman David Leguan from the Nashville Predators in exchange for forward Patrick Eves, prospect forward Cali Yarncroc, and a conditional third round pick in 2014. I'm not sure what the conditions of that pick are, um, but David Leguan leaving the Predators for the first time in his career. He, he a former second overall pick of the Preds. Kind of a surprise to see him leave a little bit, but he has been one of the faces of the franchise for many years. So I think it was just kind of time for Leguan to move on. Um, and so far, three games in as a Red Wing. He's had three points, although those three points came in one game, a goal and two assists at home against the New Jersey Devils in a 7-4 victory. Um, native of Detroit, Michigan, and actually Leguan, a Detroit, Michigan native. So he goes to play for the 33-year-old, going to play for the team he grew up watching as a child, the one team he really wanted to go to. And let's face it, Stephen Weiss has not fit in as the second-line center that the Red Wings were hoping for. He's been injured all year, and when he was has been healthy, he hasn't played well. So David Leguan, they think, can fit in fit that role very nicely. Going the other way, though, Patrick Eves, a depth player for the Predators, a fourth-line player who can kill penalties. Um, we don't, don't know the conditions of the pick. And then, really, the big piece of this trade going to the Predators is Callie Yarncroc. Because in the long term, the Predators may have the benefit of this trade because Callie Yarncroc <clears throat> is a guy who's expected to be very good in the future, expected to, expected to be maybe a second-line center in the future, it may be first line if he's lucky. He'll be a top six forward for sure, and he's a playmaker, you know. He's not going to score goals. He's a playmaker. Um, Callie Yarncroc, big piece of that Calder Cup winning um, Grand Rapids Griffins team back in 2013, um, and also a big member of the Swedish League's Again, a playmaker. He's not a goal scorer, so expect him to be more of a passer if he does make it. Next year, if the Predators can convince him to come over from Sweden and play, you know, that could be a huge benefit for the Preds, you know. Um, and he, and hope does they definitely want to see him on their roster next year. He's 22 years old, second rounder, 51st overall from 2010, native of Gavle, Sweden. So... It works out. It definitely works out. Hopefully, it will work out for the Preds. And that's the, and those are all the trades that were made since the Olympic break. And then there's only one other thing to talk about as well. Um, a huge prospect signing the other day. The Washington Capitals finally, finally coming to terms with top prospect Evgeny Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov was the 26th overall pick from the 2010 NHL entry draft. They could not convince him to come over to the U.S. He then went on to sign a contract in the KHL. It was a long contract. He played his final KHL game on March 4th before finally terminating the remainder of his contract to come over to, the, to America. He signed a two-year entry-level deal with the Capitals. He's, he and his wife both expected to live with Alex Ovechkin both going to live with Alex Ovechkin for the remainder of the year. He will be in the lineup tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they need him now because bad news for the Capitals. Mikhail Grabowski is out, and he has been placed on injured reserve. Grabowski has had a very good season in his first year as a Capital. They want to come to contract terms with Grabowski, but it has not happened yet. So it has not happened yet. So, um... One would begin to think that, wonder, think and wonder if it will even happen at all. Grabowski, through 50 games, 12 goals, 33 points. Um, definitely much better than last year, and it's just the first step of getting himself back to the where he wants to be. He hasn't had a point in a long time, one, two, three, four, five, six games, but, you know, but now he's hurt, so. We'll see how long it takes for him to get a point on the board. But anyway, Kuznetsov should add on nicely to a Washington Capitals team that's been struggling and needs to get going offensively under Adam Oates. Because that's been the big problem for the Caps. 
Everything has been poor for them lately. Poor, mediocre goaltending, which they hope can be fixed by Yaroslav Halak, and, incon and scoring inconsistencies, which they think Kuznetsov, and to a lesser extent, Dustin Penner, can help them with, if Penner can get his game in shape. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> their defense... I uh, can't really say how their defense has been doing. They really don't have... They didn't go out and get a defenseman, so obviously their defense has may possibly been maybe the best part of their game. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully Kuznetsov will work out nicely for the Washington Capitals. And if he does, there'll be definitely a steal for the Caps, for sure. And, folks, and that will do it, folks. I didn't on this video for about 56 minutes now and I'm going to end it here cuz I'm losing my voice and I it's now the afternoon and it's and I'm got and I still have my to eat my breakfast. So with that being said, this has been episode 111, the trade deadline edition, the belated trade deadline edition of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. I will see you guys again hopefully next week and if not then the week after. Thank you all and have a great day.